Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of bonding at the AP IBHL1 level. Um, we were talking about molecular structure. Uh, we will be doing, if we haven't already, done some molecular modeling so we can apply that Vesper and hybridization. I'm sure those definitions were pretty vague and fuzzy, but once we do the activity and you build the models, I think it'll become very clear. Now, uh, I want to talk about polarity. We're going to be sort of getting into that world of structure and function. So polarity is an issue of the structure of the molecule, but you will see that it is a huge component of the function of molecules. Now, when we talk about polarity, we're talking about some sort of opposition or separation. We talk about two people as being, oh, they're polar opposites. Um, magnets in the earth have north and south poles. Um, politics and religion can be very polarizing, especially when people keep talking about them on Facebook. Um, in my Facebook etiquette, I don't even read them anymore. I just don't think Facebook is the best place to talk about such controversial issues. They're a blast to talk about, but I like to do that face to face, not Facebook to Facebook. Okay, so that I guess that's my little sermon of the day. So let's take a look at this. Um, in our context, on our context of polarity, we're talking about a separation of charge when there is an uneven electron distribution within a molecule. The electrons are very mobile, they move around a lot, and if one element is more electronegative than the other element, and overall, if you could take like a time-lapsed picture of the atom, the electrons, or, the, or excuse me, of the molecule, the electrons would seem to stay more on one end of the molecule than the other end of the molecule. And we end up with a permanent, uneven distribution of electrons, and it's called a permanent dipole, two poles, moment. Okay, I don't know where the word moment came up. It's probably got a terminology that I just haven't read in a long time. So, permanent dipole moment. Now, let's take a look at water. Water has two non-bonded electrons up here. Non-bonded electrons, in terms of a pull of electron density, trump electronegativity. So those, that's pure electron charge. Electronegativity differences are just partial differences. We're talking pure electron coulombs of charge. So there's certainly a much greater electron density up here. And again, I can't wait for you to see these in three dimensions. I think it'll be clear. So we would say, it's getting a little muddy in here, so let me erase that. We would say there's a partial, remember when we did bonds? We did that fig figure eight, let me try a better one, figure eight and stopped. Partial positive on the hydrogens and a partial negative on the oxygen, towards the oxygen. The permanent dipole moment would be negative on that end and positive on this end. And we'll look at an activity that I've designed for polarity eventually that will help you with that. So um, we can, use partial charges, we can use actually uh, values we'll look at eventually, and then we can look at these arrows. Now, in this case, we've got vectors that pull, we've got bond vectors that pull in opposing directions, but they cancel one another. Um, back in, when I was a little girl, we used to watch westerns a lot. And in these westerns, and it's kind of icky, but they used to do something called drawing and quartering, which what they did is they would tie the person's hands and feet to horses and then say, giddy up. And the horses would go in these opposite directions and just rip the person apart. Um, gruesome, if you, you know, it was always implied in the ones I watched, but still pretty, pretty gruesome. So let's take a look at what happens here. Um, since we have effectively the same size horse, so it's like somebody's hands on one end and feet on another horse, and then you tell the horse to giddy up. Okay, in this case, the horse is the same strength. So it's gonna rip the person apart evenly. If it's an 
even pull on both sides, we have an even distribution and there is no permanent dipole moment. So carbon dioxide, even though the bonds are polar, the molecule is nonpolar. Okay, let's take a look at this next molecule. Certainly chlorine of all of them, remember phone call? I just learned that, that P-O-N-C-L tells you the most electronegative. Okay, so that's very electronegative. Um, it's going to pull electron density this way. So you can think of it as being drawn and quartered again, but this is a big stallion, and these are, you know, just little ponies. So that stallion is going to be pulling really strongly in this direction. So towards the chlorine, you'd have the negative, and on the other end of the molecule, you'd have that partial positive. And so this time, the person would be considered ripped apart unevenly. They're still dead, but they're dead in uneven pieces. And that would be a permanent dipole moment. Excuse me. Caleb! I'm making a movie. Sorry about that. Okay, back to the movie. So, now let's take a look at this molecule. This time, we have electron density pulled towards the chlorine, but there's four chlorines. They're all the same strength. So we've got four stallions. They're gonna pull four different directions on the carbon. This time the carbon's gonna be ripped apart evenly. I mean, this is a pretty gruesome analogy, I get it, but there's an even pull on all sides. So even again, though the bonds are polar, the bond vectors, some of you think well in vectors, I never really did, but in this case, the bond vectors cancel, and so the molecule is also not, is the molecule is nonpolar, sorry. Got distracted, okay? So if bond vectors cancel, it's nonpolar. If bond ve vectors do not cancel, it's polar. Now, in pre-AP, just one last word before we go on to our next video. In pre-AP, you might have been told that if there was a non-bonded pair on the central atom, that it was automatically polar. We can't make that assumption at the AP level, okay? Because we're going to examine a few more molecules that we didn't do in pre-AP. And, um, and you're gonna see that the vectors for the non-bonded pairs cancel one another. So we can't make that assumption anymore. It may be polar, but it's not necessarily polar. All right, one last word, molecules with a permanent dipole moment. We know that they're polar because here, these molecules, this happens to be an HF molecule that has a permanent dipole moment towards the fluorine. And here they're just moving around all willy-nilly in whatever direction they want to move. And as soon as we put a charge on these plates, the partial positives attracted to the negative plate, the partial negatives attracted to the positive plate, and you notice they all line up in an electric field. Polar molecules will do that. Nonpolar molecules will not line up with a, a, an electric field like that. Okay, again, we will merge this idea of polarity in with the activity we're going to be working on. So, until I see you, this is signing off.